And greetings, and welcome back, visitors to the Paper Prison. It is I, your host, the Comics Prisoner. Sentenced for crimes against comics illustration to be forever confined to beautiful pieces of comic book art. And I couldn't be happier. Oh, and I'm also couldn't be happier to have you return. It gets a little lonely here in comic solitary. And you have chose to, you have chosen? You've chosen to join us on the end of a series that I like to call Incredible Inkers, talking about uh, a run of issues of The Incredible Hulk, issues 223 to about 229, where we just had some wonderful artisans working on Marvel's Green Goliath. So, while all good things must end, we're going to end on a high note. So, today I find myself confined to a page from Incredible Hulk number 228, uh, I believe uh, page 22. Uh, once again, perfectly penciled and rendered by Sal Buscema and inked by relative newcomer, relative newcomer Bob McLeod. So, uh, to me, whenever I first encounter someone, it's not necessarily he's a newcomer, um, He's probably had some other credits and some other work, I just haven't encountered it, thanks to the terrible distribution system of the 70s, especially in the rural America where I grew up in. So to my eyes, this was the first time uh, I've seen Bob McLeod, this is the first time Bob McLeod, rather, has inked the Hulk, which is not true, because uh, he actually uh, inked an issue of Defenders uh, another book I was following, another book drawn by Sal Buscema, another book featuring the Hulk, uh, Defenders number 24, but it's one that I missed. Which is too bad because 15-year-old me would have loved that issue. Um, I did get to read it as an adult, so I wish I had encountered it, and I did like it, but I wish I had encountered it as a child. Interestingly enough, um, that Defender's job and this job share a lot in common. Uh, they're very similar in, in uh, approach and technique. Uh, but we are not talking about Defenders. We are talking about Incredible Hulk number 228. And we have here a wonderful page to be trapped in. Now, once again, I want to reiterate my disclaimer that what I am sharing are my just my opinions and my experiences and I'm sharing how I came at this as a young fan, aspiring artist, not so much the adult uh, workman person, which you see now who has done, who has, you know, been a professional cartoonist, you know, paid the rent, uh, doing art. Now, I've said, as I've said in uh, my previous uh, shows, um, this time of the Incredible Hulk could be, was very great, but also could be very surprising. Uh, you know, you like to uh, stick with the people you know, the, the people you're fans of. Uh, I enjoyed Rubenstein's work on this and Sinnott's, definitely Klaus Janssen. Uh, Bob Layton on that annual was a lot of fun. So, but here we have a new name. So once again, I have to brace myself for the worst. And, and relieved that things are just fine. Um, once again, as I've said, we're st we're st even though they're different artists with different techniques and different styles, they're still coming out of the Neil Adams continuity associates uh, mindset of comic art. Um, yes, all of these artists are different and they all have their different strengths, but if one may be vanilla, one may be strawberry, one may be chocolate, but they're all ice cream, and I want ice cream, and they're giving me the best ice cream ever. So as a, um, as a t young teen, um, this was feeding into the aging comic audience that was getting into the mid and upper teens who were becoming very cognizant of craft and art and this, this kind of rendering, this photorealistic rendering, is what appealed to us and me at that time. So, one, I'm very happy. 
Okay, new guy, Bob McLeod. Never heard of him, although I should have. Um, so it's staying within the style that I want to see. Now I'm going to look at it a little bit with 2020 vision. I love Bob McLeod's work then and now. Um, but even back then, I could tell a subtle difference between his work and the more experienced people. Um, his inking was the one that I felt where the inker tried to change Sal's drawing the most. Uh, it could be subtle or minimal, but I could, I swear I've seen the drawing change here and there. And also he tried to apply uh, lighting effects that if you weren't careful was not 100% successful and so could diminish the drawing a little bit. That said, I could see how much uh, McLeod worked so hard on these pages. And the fans in us always appreciate someone who works hard as opposed to someone who just, you know, phones it in. So even though it was a, there was this, this subconscious jarring, we all loved it. The only thing else I would say, especially evinced in this page, and, and quite frankly through a lot of his work at this time, seemed to be an over-reliance on Zipatone, which young me loved, but old me is kind of looking at it and saying, um, didn't need it, or not always. Now, it's real easy for me to sit here on the sidelines and critique someone who's on the front lines. As I've said before, and let me make it very clear, I like this page. I love this time of the Hulk. Everyone did a great job, just made the book look great. Uh, I just wanna say though, that even work that I didn't quote unquote like as a child, once I became a professional, I realized just how hard it was to even be that good. To be able to do work that is of professional quality, that, that rates it to be printed, is so hard. You just don't know unless you're in it. So I'm gonna stop being a uh, armchair quarterback and um, you know the, the critic that sits back and critiques others' work. And I'm just going to once again leave this page up for you to enjoy and admire. Um, once again, this is these two issues of the Hulk is where I say ends a certain chapter of artistic expression. Um, and Bob McLeod would go on to do just a lot of great things. Um, as I said, he had already been working as a professional, and then he was going to go on to co-create the New Mutants. And before that, he did an a issue of Marvel Team Up, which blew my mind because here we had the inker was also the penciler. It was the first time that I'd ever seen that happen. You know, I, I was in a box where, you know, a person was what you are. If you're an inker, that's all you do. If you're a penciler, that's all you do. If you're a writer, that's all you do. I've never seen anyone up until that point do more than one job, so it blew me away. And then when he did the uh, New Mutants graphic novel that launched the series, and he did all, you know, penciling and inking and all of that, and it was such a big piece, it just uh, blew me away. <clears throat> so, once again, the clock on the wall tells us that visiting hours is about over. I, uh, and the warden is leaning on me again to say, if you like what you've seen here, please like, subscribe, smash the bell, tell your friends. Uh, let's make a community here. Uh, I'd like to uh, be able to go on work release. Maybe if you, anyone out there would like to send me some drawings I could ink here and put up on the show. Um, like I said, I'm not a teacher or anything. It's just something I think it'd be fun we could all do together. Clubhouse, you know? So next we meet, we're going to start uh, some different subjects and... As I like to say, 
Four walls do not a prison make, but comics can be a very cool prison. Take care now. Bye-bye.